Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. Where customers get confused as employees by Karens, because to Karens, anybody and everybody works for them, as you'll soon find out in this episode. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories today, and as always, try not to shake your heads too hard. Oh, and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so I'm tired of being recognized. I live in a relatively small college town with three grocery stores, a dying mall, and a slightly decent downtown. Now, because I work in one of these grocery stores and a pharmacy, I'm often identified when I'm out, and for some reason, I just look like I work there, wherever this mythical there is. So this story took place a few years ago, and since the manager's no longer with the store, I think I can write it up without retribution. So I've got long hair, a beard, and I'm a bit on the heavy side. I normally wear rock t-shirts and a leather biker jacket when I'm not at work. I wear this like armor, and I'm actually very passive, and I don't want to be bothered when I'm out. I do look tough, but there's nothing tough about my marshmallow soul. I had just finished watching a movie at the local dying mall. I went by myself, since I just wanted to get away for a while. I was currently wearing a Doctor Who hoodie, jeans, I had my hair down, and a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. So as I'm exiting the theater, I hear that dreaded voice. The entitled call of a snooty customer. She says, Hey! Hey you! At this I turn around. I see your average soccer mom with bleach blonde hair and a purse big enough to brain a camel, carrying a large collection of trash. The woman's holding the trash with one hand and her struggling child with the other, and she's just staring at me. Now, I don't want to believe what's about to happen, but I steal myself and say, Yes? She then says, Hey, throw this away. Now, the woman said this with no pleas, no asking, it was just a demand. I glance to the trash can that's only 5 feet away from where she's standing and say, Why? At this, you'd think I just offered to split her child in half in front of her with a broadsword. And she says, You work here. You're used to this. Amazing. She knows I don't work there, but she still thinks I'm put on this earth to serve her. I just roll my eyes and turn away, scooting towards the bathroom and say, Sorry ma'am, gotta pee. And do just that, taking a quick leak and taking a long time to wash my hands. By the time I exit, the woman and her kid are gone. I figure that's all that's gonna happen with this. She's just some entitled person who thinks I work in retail and can treat me like an indentured servant. And oh boy was I wrong. Two days later, I'm back at work. I'm cleaned up, my hair's in a ponytail, I'm in a uniform just doing my thing slinging drugs at the pharmacy. When one of our most hatred managers shows up, Let's call her Gladys. Now Gladys is a passive aggressive, snobby person, and she's more than happy to toss her weight around. Gladys says to me, OP, would you come with me please? Now I'm a bit shocked, since I haven't been in trouble with this job for over 5 years, and my mind immediately starts spinning through anything I may have done in the past week or so. Gladys takes me back to the manager's office, picks up some papers, and she says, have a seat. Gladys then says to me, so, I had a complaint about you the other day from a customer. Now at this I sink down, I'm trying not to shake with panic, and I say, what have I done? Gladys then says to me, So, we had a customer that says that you were very rude to her at the movie theater the other day, and you refused to help her. Now at this I just blink a few times at her and say, I'm sorry, what? Gladys repeats the accusation, and she says, When you work for this company, you represent us even when you're not on the clock. Now, I'm not only going to write you up for this, but I want you to watch what you do in the future when you're not here. I then say to her, No. Gladys looks back at me in shock, and she says, What do you mean, no? I said, No. I'm not taking a write-up for something that happened off the clock. I then lean forward, folding my hands in my lap, and glared at her and said, Why are there no other managers here? Why is my pharmacy manager not here? Shouldn't he be here when I'm being disciplined by someone that's not even in my department? Speaking of which, where's our department manager? Could you show me where in the code of conduct handbook it says that I can't refuse to clean up after someone when I'm not on the clock? Doesn't it say in the training videos we watch when we start to not work off the clock? At this, Gladys was doing her best impression of a gaping fish by this point. Her eyes were wide and she was staring back at me. I don't think she was expecting the happy-go-lucky nerd in the pharmacy to take such a hard line and not just roll over to her casual bullying. I then stand up and open the door. I then say to her, if you want to take it up with my manager, please do. But do know that if I hear anything about this, I will take this all the way to the store manager, your boss, and even corporate if I have to. I then left, shaking with anger. 
I'd heard others in the store complain about this manager before and how she'd try to toss her weight around, but I'd never had it happen to me before. I don't know if the original customer was a friend of Gladys and she thought she'd get some revenge, but I never heard anything else on the matter. Two months later, Gladys was let go in a store restructuring. Every other manager was shifted or reassigned and she was the only one to be shown the door. Honestly guys, she was probably shown the door for trying to pull stupid stuff like that all the time. Like who knows how many other employees she's tried to power trip over in the past. I would have just laughed in her face at that point. I'm so glad OP stood his ground. I want you to watch what you do in the future when you're not here. Okay there, mom. So for some context, I work at a chain bakery that has bright blue polo shirts and khaki color pants as the uniform, with the bakery's logo embroidered on the sleeves. Coming home from work on the bus, there's a small plaza at the stop before mine that has some pretty bomb pizza. And every once in a while, I'll stop by the plaza to grab some and walk the rest of the way home. The uniform there is a fire truck red shirt with the logo completely covering the back and also black pants. If someone can tell me how Karen got this mixed up, I would love to know. Anyway, here's the story. So on this great day, I was running on about 3 to 4 hours of sleep, a cheese croissant, and a coffee. I had gotten off a long shift and hadn't had time to grab lunch while on break, so suffice to say, I was hungry. Hungry enough that I didn't even care that I was still in my work uniform, I just wanted some food pronto. So I stopped by the pizza parlor, grabbed a slice, some Mountain Dew, and a cookie for the road, and then sat down a happy customer. I had my headphones in and was scrolling through my phone while eating when the staff disappeared behind the counter. No biggie. About a minute later, Karen walks in. Now it was just me in the place at that time, and the staff was still in the kitchen. The most attention I gave her was a quick glance before looking back to my phone and taking a sip of my pop. I assumed she would just go up to the counter and order. You know, like a normal person. But before I knew it, she was standing right beside my table and giving me that good old disapproving stare that only Karens are capable of. This was our interaction as follows. I take my earbud out and lowered the volume and asked, Can I help you? Karen says to me, Hi, can I get a large pizza, some breadsticks, blah blah blah. Now I do catch on pretty quickly, so I interrupt her and say, Oh sorry, I don't work here. Now Karen pauses, as if this information was too large of a worldview shift for her to process. And in the end, her brain couldn't compute and she says, Hey, first of all, don't you interrupt me, that's very rude. Second, what are you talking about? That is a uniform. I know you work here, so don't you give me that attitude. Now, the logic of this Karen made my own brain short circuit. And I guess it showed on my face, because the next thing I knew, her jaw dropped in shock, and she was railing on me, on my horrendous work ethic, and berating me over wearing headphones on the job and how dare I eat the product that's meant for customers. She even went as far as to say that I'd made a huge mistake, and that she's a regular and had more than enough leeway to get me fired. Now a side note, if she was a regular, she would have known what the uniform looked like. It was around this point that I remembered the logo on my sleeve, and I just wordlessly turned my arm and pointed at it. Karen stops yelling long enough to give it a proper look, and I could see the color just drain from her face. I then say to her, See that? That is my company's name. And, uh, what's this place called again? Then not two seconds later, an actual staff member shows up behind Karen, and they asked if there's a problem. Now I thought this was the end of it, when Karen pipes up and says, Yes, there is a problem. Your coworker is extremely rude to me. Yep. That's right, Karen was still insisting that I worked here. Pizza Girl looks at me and recognizes me as the girl she just served, and she says, Uh, ma'am, she doesn't work here. At this, Karen says, I want to see a manager. The girl then goes off to get her manager, all the while Karen's giving me the snobbiest death glare that I've ever seen in my life. I just sigh and take another sip of my pop. Then Pizza Girl and the manager come out, and the manager says, Hi, what's the problem here? Karen says, that girl refused to take my order and she was extremely rude to me. You need to discipline her. Now, the manager looks at me and knows that I don't work for her and she says, she doesn't work here, ma'am, but I can take your order if you'd like. Finally, Karen leaves me alone and she follows the manager to place her order. Now, the whole time, I could hear Karen complaining so loudly about me that I just started to pack up my things to eat my pizza at home in peace. Pizza Girl stopped me though. She handed me a takeout bag with another slice, garlic dip, and a cookie. She said it was an apology for me having to deal with Karen, and also a thank you for being one of their nicer regulars. 
Now this still puts a smile on my face, and this happened yesterday. On my way out, I heard Karen demanding a free pizza since they were just giving free stuff away. I hope those guys turned out okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they did OP. Now this is clearly an example of a Karen making a mistake, refusing to accept it, and just doubling down making her look like a crazy person. At least, I think. It's funny how many stories I've read where these people refuse to acknowledge they were wrong, and they just pull out all the stops. And hey, at least she didn't get arrested. As far as we know. Guys, it finally happened. And I have to say, it was kind of traumatic. Now, I did a bad and wore red into Target with khakis. Long story short, I had gotten off an overnight shift, and I didn't think about where I was going and saw Target. I knew I needed a few things from laundry detergent to some groceries and such, so I went there. I got stopped a few times, but every time, I simply said that I wasn't an employee and only had to show my work badge once out of the four times, until the last guy. So, to set the stage, I'm 5'6 and just over 120 pounds if I eat a full course meal, so I'd say I'm smallish. The dude that stopped me is about a foot taller than me and a pure definition of a gym bro. Now, I won't lie, I didn't handle it well. I was tired after the overnight and I was annoyed that I had been stopped several times now. The guy calls out to me and I ignored him. He then followed and called out a few more times and I simply said, Hey, I don't work here. Now the guy didn't like that, he ran in front of me and then grabbed my arm and he began to shout, I'm a customer, you. And that's when I punched him in the throat with my free arm out of reflex. After that happened, the guy quickly lets go of me, begins coughing violently, and I just stand there in disbelief that A, someone would just grab an individual and scream at them, and B, I had just punched the guy over 6 feet, who looks way stronger than me, and who was obviously very angry at me. So at this, I ran. I ran up to the front counter, I pulled out my phone and called 911. I told the person on the phone and the employees what happened, and then I hid. Eventually the cops came, see this guy screaming at employees to tell him where I went, and after about an hour of de-escalation, I come out. The guy says something along the lines of me assaulting him after he politely tried to get my attention. I then explained my side and said that I am not an employee. Cops check the cameras, see what happened, and then they cuff him and escort him out. This is highly an abridged version of what happened, as this took a while to get done. During this, he tried to explain, and I distinctly remembered him saying, so I grabbed him. They then asked me if I wanted to press charges, and honestly, no, I don't have the mental energy to take it to court, and honestly, I feel like punching him in the throat was enough payback. Personally, for me. See, this is exactly why you don't grab onto anybody. You never know how people are gonna react, and in this guy's case, OP gave him a quick strike to the throat. Now, OP does come back with a part two, and here it is, guys. He says, so this just happened today. I was shopping in a local co-op to get some breakfast before work. And then I saw him. I saw the dude that I punched. He saw me, and I tried to hurry off, but he called out, I'm sorry. So at that, I stopped, turned around, and he walked over and looked really apologetic, so I decided to hear him out. We talked for a bit, and after about 5 minutes of him apologizing, he said that he's really sorry, that his grandfather recently passed away, and it was hard on him, but that doesn't excuse what he did though, so he's really sorry. He also explained that he didn't face any charges, but he did seek out therapy, and that seems to have been helping. He even paid for my breakfast. It turns out that dude was just having a bad day. Either way, I figured I'd just update with a happy and somewhat wholesome ending to the interaction. Hey, everybody has bad days once in a while, but you should never, ever, ever use that as an excuse to put your hands on anybody. Because like I said, you might get punched in the throat. Honestly, good on that guy for catching OP and apologizing, and good on OP for being willing to listen to what the guy had to say and getting closure to the whole situation. Okay, so while we're on the topic of putting hands on people, the next story, an entitled Karen learns why you shouldn't do that. So I'm a 25-year-old soldier, and I was shopping for some food for dinner at the local supermarket. Now, I usually shop there two to four times a week on my way home, in full uniform. That's why often some elderly men or women ask me to help them with things, like getting something from the top shelf or putting something heavy in their cart. It's no problem for me at all, and I often ask if they also need help with loading their groceries in their car, because honestly, it's no big deal for me. So now, to the Karen. So this happened one day, after I helped an old grandma put some heavy groceries in her car. After I finished, I was walking back to my car when I hear a lady behind me shout, Now that you're done with her, you can help with my shopping and carry my things. With that typical Karen voice. 
Now I'm pretty irritated because I'm dressed in full uniform and I'm not her servant, and plus, she didn't use please or thanks. I say politely to her, no, I'm sorry, I can't help you, as you can obviously see that I don't work here. I was just helping with her groceries. Now this was not the correct answer. Karen gets louder and she screams, hey, I pay taxes, so you work for me. Now obviously I say no to her, and I continue walking away to my car. And that's when I felt a hard grip on my shoulder, and out of reflex, I grab her arm, twisted it, and slammed her. Hard. Which caused a big, bloody nose. So after a lot of screaming from her, and a long conversation with the shop staff and some people who called police, I pressed charges on her for assaulting me, and she got banned from the shop. Guys, I literally can't at this. How on earth would you think that it's a good idea to aggressively put your hands on a freaking military soldier? Like, what did you expect was gonna happen? And with her entitled attitude of I pay taxes, so you work for me. Yeah, your taxes pay government employees to do the jobs for which they're hired, not whatever the heck you want them to do, Karen. Now, I'm pretty much a fixture in the local grocery store. Almost every day, I'm in there because I like to cook, but I don't always remember to get all the ingredients and I have to go back. I'm in the grocery store so much that I know most of the staff by name. A couple of my neighbors even work there. But anyway, I was walking around the aisles picking up beef broth, vegetables, and whatnot when I see a lady wandering the aisle aimlessly. So I thought I'd be considerate and ask her if I could help her. The old woman was looking for baking goods. Now I know the store like the back of my hand, and I know where it is. As we walked to the baking aisle, we struck up a conversation. The sweet elderly lady asked me if I would help her with shopping because she had never been in the store before. I said sure, why not? I was in no big hurry, I mean, I live in the apartments right behind the store. And I mean actually behind the store. I can stand on my patio, take off a shoe, and actually hit the back of the store. We wound up doing all of her shopping together, and she began to tell me about her kids and grandkids and how she was soon to be a great grandmother. She was a very pleasant woman. We walked the aisles, taking the items on her list and throwing them in the shopping carts, and she would check the items off. Finally, about half an hour later, we proceed to check out. I told her I'll be right back because I almost forgot what I had gone there for. As I returned to the register, the lady was telling the manager what a nice employee I was and didn't want to get me in trouble for taking up my time. At this, the manager smiles and says that I don't work there. The lady looked at me puzzled, and then she apologized for taking up so much of my personal time. I told her I was in no rush, and that I live in the apartments nearby. It turns out that she just moved several apartments away across the apartment complex, and we walked home together to our apartments. She then smiled and asked me why I helped her if I didn't work there. I tell her my parents raised me to help others without reward. I then gave her the groceries. I told her if she needed help or wanted to go shopping to let me know. The woman said she did her shopping every Monday, and if I wouldn't mind going, she'd enjoy the company. I told her it was very kind of her to try to keep me from getting fired, even though I don't work there. So now, I have a shopping buddy, and someone to talk with and share coupons. Honestly guys, once in a while, you need a wholesome story like this. Now I know many of you love hearing about crazy Karens getting arrested, but these types of wholesome stories I love the most, because hey, humans helping other humans, what's not to love about that? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today, and if you did, remember to hit that thumbs up. If you missed the last episode on the channel, a super duper entitled Karen decides to smoke a cigarette on an airplane, and she threatens to fight everybody. It's such a crazy story, so check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.